I speak with people about this, uh, people are always shocked to find out that, that their church body teaches this. When a pastor stands in front of the congregations and declares that in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, if objective justification is true, then that is a lie. If everyone has already been justified, then what is baptism? Why be baptized? Why repent? And Honestly, how can I now come back and, as Jesus authorizes pastors to do, not forgive sins to the impenitent if God himself has already forgiven those very sins? The problem with not speaking up against this, allowing this to go on, is that it takes the sinner away from the comfort that comes from the atonement. Uh, it takes away the uh, means of grace and the efficacy of it. Our faith is to be always centered and focused on Christ himself and in the promise attached to him. And whenever it's not, then we find that that will have fallout in every portion, every article of Christian teaching. So I started just asking questions about it in our district, and as soon as I started asking the questions, um, the district got upset with me for even seeming to maybe question this um, decided doctrine in the Wisconsin Synod. And from that point, um, it didn't take very long, about a year from the time I first started asking questions to the time that I was suspended from the Wisconsin Synod Ministerium. So the overture that the congregation sent in was filled with nothing but Holy Scripture, the Lutheran confessions, and the evidence of where the error could be found, thus revealing the disagreement with objective justification. Well, the overture never even made it into the convention workbook. It's incumbent upon everyone who has been baptized, who has been confirmed, to understand the implications of the doctrine of universal objective justification um, and how this is at variance with everything that they have been taught. This is truly the article on which the church stands or falls. Then it should be an article that we're willing to investigate. It should be an article that we're willing to discuss and debate uh, and flesh out so that we can confess this, not only for our own salvation, but for those of future generations as well.